FBW fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. United We Stand was a great show this past Thursday night from the American Legion in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, on this very occasion, we got a f someone who was in attendance for this very event. Another, so someone who's been supporting FBW almost as long as I have, ladies and gentlemen, Melissa. Hi guys, and ladies. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, the uh, night began with the commissioner, or as he calls himself now, governor of Tier 1 Wrestling and Five Borough Wrestling, Christopher Becker. He comes to the ring with um, Ariella Nix, Nix, his new assistant, carrying the Tier 1 Wrestling Tag Team Championship belts, and Beckett announced that the belts have not been defended since by Verna, by Mike Verna, the Man of Steel, and product David Starr since they won the belts. They haven't defended them together. Also known as the Steel and Star Connection. Yes. Sadly, we're going to miss that because unfortunately, Mike Verna comes out with both the Tier 1 and FBW Heavyweight Championship belts. And Beckett announces that Verna and David Starr, because Starr has not made the last two Tier 1 shows, they are no have been stripped of the tag team championship. Verno remained in the ring and he's drinking a beer and he's interrupted by wrestling's richest prize, Darius Carter. Hey, buddy, how are you? And then eventually Carter was telling I think bickering to Beckett, I won't say that three times fast. About wanting a ring match for that belt. Eventually PJ Stackpole comes out and mentions the fact that Anthony Gangone had pinned <laughs> pinned uh, Mike Verna at the three-year anniversary show last month. Eventually, Gang Gong comes through the crowd, attacks Verna from behind, and Darius Carter joins in in the beating, and then uh, Christopher Beckett announces that later in the show it would be Verna, a part of his choice, against Carter and Gang Gong. I thought you were ready to chime. Okay. Well, you don't have to go through your whole thing. I mean, I just pretty much mentioned everything, unless you have something extra there. Well, um, basically, FBW uh, GM Christopher Beckett, an unknown brunette, walked to the ring. She is wearing the Tier 1 tag team belts on her shoulders. Mr. Beckett and it introduces her as Ariel and X, his newest assistant. Mr. Beckett uh, speaks about unity and tells the audience that he will strip Mike Brown and David Starr of their tag team belts. He's interrupted by Darius Carter, whose and Jeers follow each step he takes. He distracts Mr. Beckett, Miss Nix, and Mike Verna for the crowd to go nuts when Anthony Gangborn ambushes him. Anthony's advocate, DJ Shackle, praises him and gets to the microphone. He talks about his side of things as Darius shakes his hand. DJ gets a few shots in tonight. Which makes me think, as Darius um, aligns with Stackpole. Sum up. Later on tonight, Darius and Kingle will go against Verna and his partner of, cho of his choosing. You know, I forgot Carter and Stackpole shook hands. Mm -hmm. So maybe a good thing you got that book with you. But we get the action underway as we have um, The Awakening, The Devil's Outlaw Stockade, and no longer bulldozing, Father Matt Tremont, as they took on Bam Sullivan and Logan Black. Now, in this matchup, um, yeah, you can get to the details on that, because I didn't give the result away yet. Uh, okay, so, Tier 1 Tag Team match. Uh, Stockade and Father Matt Tremont versus Service, with a barbed wire bat versus Logan Black and Bam Sullivan. Stoked to see this sad. Stoked to see this. Sad that Mike and Dave lost the titles, but glad that Stockade and Tremont took them. Hope to see Cyrus to be more productive in this match. So in case you didn't figure that out, folks, Stockade and Matt Tremont won the vacant Tier 1 Tag Team Championship, defeating Logan Black and Bam Sullivan. Uh, there was one point in the match where Victoria Von Black uh, had gone after Stockade and what is he, awesome. was, he, was, a, he um, was going to power bomber, but she countered with a Hurricane Rana, which he really pretty much popped for. Oh, and that kind of, my uh, sadness went away, and happiness is back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, our second matchup of the night, we see... The Bad Apple, Matt McIntosh, go one-on-one -on -one with FBW Original Talon. Uh, I really like this matchup, and uh, great to see McIntosh getting booked. I don't know like what other promotions he works for outside of WrestlePro besides FBW now. But during this uh, matchup, out comes a longtime independent wrestling journeyman, Danny DeMonto. Which I didn't recognize because of his hair. 
but at the same token, he's lost so much weight in Statue. recent years, and yeah, he's got short hair now. He Demato attacked Talon and pretty much costing him the match against the Bad Apple, and afterwards, uh, which I would label Granny Smith because you know it's like tart, and some people don't really like it. Huh? Magda, Granny Smith, bad. Hmm. I would think Red Delicious would be good. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it was. Uh, but after the match, uh, Danny opens up the chair. Did you anything else tonight? No, we don't. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, uh, Cameo by the waitress. Uh, well, she uh, didn't get on camera. At least, yeah, at least she'll give us a check now. I'm just checking things out here. Okay. Yeah, so what happened was, um, yeah, Demato was in the ring. He opens up the chair, and I think he, and he's sitting over Talon, and Demato says he's not very keen on the current crop of New York independent wrestlers and I guess it's hinting that Danny will make his FPW debut soon. Now we're wondering what style of clothing, like, you know, his, I guess... Um, oh, his gear. Well, he, his hasn't, gear would be. he hasn't wrestled in almost a year. He had broke his leg at a show in New Jersey, I understand. And he was in a wheelchair for a time, on crutches, so I don't know. Oh, and he's Mike's favorite wrestler. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well... We're not going to get into that. I mean... But in any event, on with our next matchup, which was... No, we went through that already. Yeah, I, got, I, got nice I know, I know what you're... No, we don't have to keep doing that. I mean, we don't have too much time, you know that. But... Okay, okay thank I, you, folks. All right. We'll look at that after this. Um, let me see. Here we are. Okay, yeah, next was the uh, wild card. You didn't these french fries wrapped up, did you? Uh, no, thank you. Um, the wild card qualifying matchup, as we saw Pro Wrestling Maniac Joe Gacy take on Chris Payne. Now, during the matchup, there was this one guy in an ECW t-shirt and was like really goading Gacy. And the guy even like bashed his beer can, I guess his head a la the Sandman, and looked like he was really going to, he was walking 12 years ago, we thought he was going to jump over it. Wondering if he was a plant. I doubt it. He would have stayed for the whole show. That's true. He would have done something and then maybe shown the door and that would have been it. And um, also, um, Payne, Payne had a remark towards the. He had, and then pa actually Payne noticed a green man in the front row from the A Shot of Wrestling podcast, and he tells him, "It looks like Gumby took a shit." But despite all that gaga, Chris Payne defeated the pro. Did he? Yes, Chris Payne defeated Forcing Maniac Joe Gacy to now qualify for the wild card championship match, which is, I don't know if that's going to be later this year or when, FBW. Well, September will be the next show. It's the next show, but we'll get to that in a little bit as well. But they're going to keep doing qualifiers. Up next, we have... Wild card championship. That's what we just went to that match. So, there's that. Oh, okay, uh, you're up to... <laughs> fourth. Yeah, we're up to our fourth match, which was... Denny Gavin versus... Yeah. Orion Dove. De Denny Gavin against Orion Dove. And, of course, uh, the Denny Domain was on hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, Orion Dove, trying to live up to his name, he was flapping his arms like a bird. This guy is not Coco Beware, folks. Mm -mm. He's a hit or miss. Ah, I don't know about a hit or a miss, but, you know, I mean, he only debuted early this year. No, and, Dove. Yeah, he debuted earlier this year, so it's like, too early to tell. And uh, Gavin, of course, his second appearance, and after gaining the victory, out comes Force, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, AJ Specter, and Bear Bronson, and PJ Stackpole. They do a number on Denny until the elements, Iceberg and Pyro Pulse, make the save. And uh, there's one fan in the crowd. He threw, I don't know if it was beer, I don't know if he's from the Denny domain or not, beer, some kind of drink at Maxwell, and Maxwell was hot. He wanted, to, he wanted to, like, mangle this guy. I mean, you know, he could have used his scarf. I don't know if he was wearing it at that point in time. No, that would be kind of stupid. Was I don't know if he was, there. I know, but I don't know why it was, if he wore it to the ring at that yeah. moment. But then, eventually, the hurricane comes out, and he's standing in the ring with the elements, and basically challenged Force to a six-man tag later in the show. Mm -hmm. At that point, they did go to intermission, and uh, actually, there was something I forgot to mention. Um, people, as people threw streamers at the hurricane, 
<laughs> they were, she, she said, it's Christmas? Because they were red and green streamers, she noticed. And uh, that's what basically um, went down. But yeah, they, they went to intermission, and I gotta say, um, despite a lack of advertising, you know, they managed to draw a great crowd for a Thursday night show. I could have swore the Legion's air conditioned. I felt some air conditioning in the building, but it just wasn't enough. Or at least it was, uh, you felt it more in the beginning, and then as the hours ticked on, it died down. Possibly the, the body heat, too, of everybody, yeah. too, around us. Yeah. can't remember. Was the crew section filled this time around? Our, our side. I see, I see. There was pe people there, I know. Sometimes it's full, sometimes it's not. Yeah. We missed one member, though, which is sad. But uh, we'll see him next week. Oh, well, I mean, I can understand if you couldn't make it. But, yeah. We come back to the action as we see Darius Carter, Anthony Gangone, geared up to face the Man of Steel, Mike Verna, a partner of his choosing. All of a sudden, Black Betty starts playing, and out comes Fighting Spirit Wrestling original Suntan. And Suntan's got drinks a beer, and he's ready to come to the ring, but Verna stops him and says, no, 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 maybe next time. But oh, then... wait. Yeah, we know, but yeah, I'll leave this one to you. Okay, so... Um, Darius Carter uh, versus, and Anthony Guy and Gong versus Meg Oh, you just Meg that part away. Oh, well, I mean, no, I understand that. But I was getting to that part. I said about Suntan. After Verona took, grabbed Suntan and brought him to the back. Basically, familiar music starts to play, and out comes the big O, who had not been seen in FBW since he, since he signed his uh, contract of resignation back at the one-year anniversary show in 2015. And the, the crowd went ballistic and all, and I'm sorry. But we can, now we can get to that part. The match was on. Uh, what is it? So, basically, when um, Big O comes out, yes. everybody loses their mind. <laughs> um, and also, Stackpole, you know, he was screaming, I fired you! Correction, Stackpole, O signed a contract of resignation back in 2015. I was there for that. Uh, uh, you didn't have any, nothing else you wrote? Um, okay. So Darius walks out to, to booze and jeers. Anthony and PJ, similar fare. Crowd climbs up to their feet when Mike walks out. He teases us with Sunshine. But then Mike makes another surprise and brings out Big O. The crowd loses their mind. Hmm. Match six. No, no, we know. Well, we can't go yet because as great as it was to see Mega Muscle back together, they were defeated by Darius Carter and Anthony Gang going. I forgot who pinned Verna in the match. And uh, Gang going, I think it was, the, took the FBW title and he clocked Carter with it. And then he left the ring. But then Carter, he gets up and the doctor was tending to Mike Verna. And Carter. He grabbed the Tier 1 heavyweight title and went out the side door with it. Went out on East 56th or 57th Street, I believe it was. All right. And now, next up, we had a triple threat match, which saw Rad Brad Benson with his brother CJ, Kano, and Cyrus DeVille. Take it. Okay. Um, do blondes really have more fun? CJ reminded one of our friends of Chris Harrell. <clears throat> this was a fun match to watch. In the end, Cyrus was the one who dominated. Yeah, Cyrus picked up the victory over Kano and Brad, but then all of a sudden, Logan Black, Bam Sullivan, and Victoria Von Black hit the ring. Stocky ends up chasing Victoria to the back and called her a name. And uh, Logan takes the microphone and issued a challenge for a no DQ match at FBW's next event in September, date to be determined. And the funny thing was, somebody in the crowd yelled, what's the date? And Logan said, I'm not a promoter, I don't know. So that will probably blow off that feud. Then it was the main event, well, I guess the main event time since they went on last, as we saw Force, Max Soul, Jacob Friedman, Bear Bronson, and AJ Specter take on the Hurricane and the Elements, Iceberg and Pyro Pulse. Um, Rex... Keep talking. Rex left the faction due to a leg injury, but will return to um, FBW next year if possible. A lot of well, <laughs> a lot of interesting moments. Mm. Uh, I, I guess some would call it semi 
semi homo erotic spots. Uh, spots from AJ Specter and MJF to make crowd yeah. laugh or the LGBT faction writer to get ideas. Entertainment aside, always a pleasure to see the elements and force kick ass. Both theme songs are fantastic to hear. Put the elements for the force theme. Both. Oh, because I know Hurricane came out to his WWE music. Yeah. I think I would both. Because I think Force, I think that might have been Inspector's solo theme. Oh. Unless I'm wrong. I don't know. Either way, good. Yeah. But nonetheless, yeah. Uh, Hurricane chokeslam somebody, and I forgot Pyro or Iceberg chokeslam somebody. Um. It was a fun match. I'm surprised. They, they, I guess they went on last and I guess send the fans home happy. Mm hmm. I am a little bummed out that FBW will time. not be running a show in August. Well, because I think Troy's going on vacation. I take it he is. As for where, we don't know. Uh, obviously, we don't know. I mean, we <laughs> I mean, don't, that would be a little too creepy. We're, we're not really, yeah, we're not bosom buddies with the guy. That's true. And he's a wrestling promoter, but we're not bosom buddies with the dude. Nah. But I guess it's time for the personal notes. It was great having, um, seeing Nicole, Mike McNicholas, um, Peter Gilmore, Kevin, Thomas, Pete Whaler, I think, was there. Uh, Brett, Mark. Um, What's his name, Mark? Who? The guy that I was talking about before. Uh, Brad. No, no, not the wrestler. We're, not talking, we're talking fans right now. Yeah, that's what I'm... Uh, of course, we've got to see Ryan Peterson. Oh, that's, that's the one we've got to address right now. Um, during an admission, Ryan was announced to the crowd, telling people, not everybody, not to throw anything towards the ring during matches I mean we understand that but I wish that could have been announced before the show even started instead of waiting until intermission I mean thankfully most of the crowd did behave themselves I will say that except for the two individuals we mentioned earlier and then there was that boulevard um, yeah they saw the boulevard bullies were in attendance um two bearded men for those that don't know who they are uh and it looks to me that the Gavin no, the Denny Domain have proved my point that they're not real wrestling fans. Because after Denny Gavin's victory over Orion Dove, they all left. They didn't stay for the whole show, unlike last month when Denny went on late. Will they come back next time? We don't know. Well, it's obvious he's going to come back because he's the, he was the first one to qualify for the wild card no, championship match. But will they, like be like bandwagoners or will like will, will they be true true fans that's the question or become true fans you know we're starting to sound like the wrestling snobs now one of them is an English teacher Daniel yeah that's cool he has to look for a teacher believe it or yeah. not yeah <laughs> well, well I only saw Joey from the snobs there the other night I didn't see Daniel um but yeah Sorry if we're kind of taking your vote. heat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, they'll watch. I, I don't know which one of them will watch it, but at least, I, at least neither one of us is eating ice cream right now. I mean, that would kind of be smart because it's like been so hot. Well, I can understand it is, you know, summertime and all. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, there's some waiting for me at home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as mentioned, if Fibro Wrestling returns in September, uh, D. We to be to determined. Well, not, we don't have to figure out. The promoters will figure that out. Once they mention it and put it out there for everybody, then we can we, we can start planning. But, yeah, match wish list time. Yeah, good look in your book for the guys we saw on the show. I think, well, here's one. I think I think it's time for Anthony Gangone to get a title shot to FBW champion Mike Verna. Mm -hmm. But, you, you, uh, well, obviously it looks like it'll be Logan Black and Bam Sullivan against... Of the Awakening, Stockade and Matt Tremont in a no-DQ match if they accept the challenge. Uh, I'd like to see Force defend the tag belts against... Uh, hmm. Let's see. Ooh, maybe Force... Against? Against the Awakening. That can't happen. Why not? The Awakening's going to accept that challenge from Logan and Bam. The no-DQ Afterwards, match. maybe. Well, maybe afterwards, but this is what we're just dealing with the next show coming right now. Excuse me. I so, know. But, you could, but maybe, I don't know. They, obviously, they'll be in, atten in, a, in attendance. Well, they'll be at the show anyway. For the, to, Maybe defending the tag belt since they win a six-man. Or maybe Darius and Mike Verna 
could come to... Oh, no, wait, maybe a three-way match since Gang going clock Carter with the FBW belt. Right. Maybe a three-way. That'd be awesome. And uh, for those who didn't know uh, about Christopher Beckett's assistant, Ariella Nick, she used to wrestle for House of Glory, so I don't know if she's going to ever get going to wrestle again. But uh, she's obviously... Was she injured? That's why she I think she might have, taken, might have taken time off because I hadn't seen her, her name on House of Glory in over a year. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I get. She could have been injured, but I don't know how often she got to wrestle over there. Because I don't go to their shows too often. Yeah, I, I know that there's an orange cat there somewhere. But, mm. Orange cat? Yeah, there's a ginger cat oh. at Hog. I remember, um, what do you call it, one of the photographers had held him or her oh, up okay. in one of the pictures. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll have to wrap this up soon. Um, let me see. Um, well, yeah, another thing I want to address, due to those two, due to the anti-Maxwell and anti-Gacy fan, maybe you should have some security at the shows, FBW. I don't want to have any incidents where you got to throw somebody out or a fan gets their carcass owned and handed to them by a wrestler. And then... You know, it would be, right. yeah, be much better for that, you know, for security to, to be there. Because then, you know, pe- more people will see this and they'll talk to other people and there'll be a bigger crowd in the, in the stands. Yeah, that would be great to have, a, you know, a bigger crowd, but, you know, at least... But, if the, you know, if there's no security, then people are going to feel, oh, okay, this promotion is not safe. Yes. I don't feel comfortable. Right. I'd rather not be here and find some other way of entertainment. Yes. So, please be safe next yeah, time. Yeah, better safe than sorry, as they say. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would just hope that how it is. But, what I cannot understand about these fan about a lot of fans, <sighs> I mean, picking on poor Maxwell, I mean, the only reason you're, you're, you're the, you guys are chanting that towards him is if you're is because you're looking at it. And I mean, it's not like you have Superman eyes where you can actually see through the clothing. <laughs> yeah, not even a Man of Steel no. can uh, see that. Either it be a show or a right now. We don't know. Can but I? like, I mean, come on, that's rude. It, it's, a, it's rude. It sucks, and it's a personal thing. Yeah, but it's obvious that they wouldn't say that if they weren't looking at the dude's package. Yeah, but point blank, hopefully next time they'll have more people. Not only that, I can't believe I forgot to mention this all this time, I I brought a drawing board with me, folks, and uh, I don't know, I could have sworn Mike McNichols took a picture of what I drew, and I couldn't really think of much to, to write at the show, so hopefully FBW, you'll inspire me come next show. And maybe even other crew members will get to use it as well, the board. But at least we had a great time. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone who didn't enjoy the show the other night. But um, if you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment and a like. And uh, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe another FBW fan may want to do this with me. After, either I don't know, be after a show, but it might be like days after a show. Or even better, maybe the crew. Might do like a, group. A, a group video? I don't know how we could pull that off. Or maybe another, maybe. like two. I mean, just maybe, yeah, to make no, it another crew member, a three way round table thing. That'd be great. But yeah, but FBW United, we stand. Very good show. And, um, hmm. Can't wait to come back in September. Mm-hmm. All together now. You might remember this song. See you. In September. I don't think I was born yet when that was out. I can't remember who sang it either. You were, well, 70s? I don't know if it was 70s or 80s, uh, 60s maybe. I don't know. It sounds like a 60s thing. Probably is, but nonetheless, can't wait to come back.